What's up guys, Stu here, and welcome today to a collection of not one, not two, but three ruddy movie reviews, as we cast our mind back through the last couple of months of films that I did see, but just didn't get around to doing videos for, because... because I'm lazy. That's right, it's time for a ruddy movie catch-up. <laughs> And I haven't done one of these for a while, but essentially it's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to catch up on movies. Well, that's helped me a lot. It's good to know there are people you can turn... Believe me when I say we have got three absolute Mr. Kipling angel cake slices of films today. So let's just dive headfirst into these mother lovers. Kicking things off, we've got The Incredibles 2, which is of course a sequel to the classic Pixar animated film The Incredibles, which was released in 2004, a whole 14 years ago. But the first is a much loved classic for people that enjoy watching good films that also happen to be animated about superheroes. I'm one of those people. I watched it and I really enjoyed it. But what about the new one? Well, having watched it, I gotta say guys, it really is Alright, you thought I was going to say incredible, didn't you? You cheeky beaver. No, it's alright guys, I've got to say, I was excited for this one because it's a sequel to The Incredibles, but I've got to be honest, I do think it came a little bit too late. There was a time when I was very, very excited about the prospect of an incredible sequel, but I think that time just kind of passed a little bit too long. But that's not to say that there isn't stuff to enjoy about this one. I did have a really fun time with it. I love that we've got the returning voice cast here with everyone, bar little Zach because he was tiny in the first one and 14 years later, that kid ain't gonna have a high voice anymore. He gonna be sounding like this. Don't know why in my head he'd go deep southern American. It might work, who knows? Brad Bird's back in the directing seat. He's always great in sort of animation action sequences. It was great for the first one. And this one, my favorite thing about it is the action sequences in there. We've got more superheroes in here than the first one, which makes for some interesting uh, fight sequences between them. We've got like people opening up portals, all that jazz. It's fun to watch. So yeah, from a kind of entertaining standpoint, it kept my interest throughout the entire runtime. And I do like what they ended up doing with the story where it's Elastigirl going doing her thing and Mr. Incredible staying at home doing the family side of things. I was a bit sceptical about that having watched the trailer because I was like, I don't know if I really want to watch, you know, near two hours of him just being a dad. It sounds like a joke which would be funny at first but might drag after a while. But they do do a good job of making that work through the whole film and I like the dynamic that that sets up with the characters. It's something a little bit new for this, uh, which I think was much needed to inject this with a little bit of life 14 years on from the original. But I have got to be honest, on the other side of things there, it does feel a little bit like we're just kind of seeing the same shit in a slightly different way again, which makes me just want to go back and watch the first one, to be honest. I'm not sure that this one really offers a huge amount that the first one can't offer. I mean, sure, it's nice to catch up with these characters. Have a little... How you... How you doing there? Keep... Keeping strong? Yeah, good, nice. But I don't know if the whole thing really feels, at the end of the day, like it's sort of warranted its own existence in that sense, which sounds a little bit harsh, but yeah, I think I'd rather just go back and watch the first one, to be honest. And I've got to be honest, there are certain parts of the story that just... Just felt a little bit flat for me. I, I wasn't a huge fan of what they did with the villain in this one. Uh, but it's still an enjoyable time. So it's just kind of alright at the end of the day for me. But now let's move from superheroes to laptop screens. It's Unfriended the Dark Web. I, I'm not going to beat around the bush on this one, guys. I didn't, I didn't enjoy this. <laughs> I didn't enjoy this film at all. But having seen the first Unfriended, and knowing that this is a sequel to that film that exists and is a thing... Is anyone really shocked that it turned out to be god-awful? Anyone? Anyone? So yeah, I guess at the end of the day you could say, if you're one of my friends and you, and you enjoy Unfriended the Dark Web, well, you can consider yourself still a friend who I value deeply, even though our opinions might sometimes differ on films. You thought I was going to say Unfriended, didn't you? You cheeky frisbee. No, but really, I don't understand how anyone could get any kind of enjoyment out of this film. But there were people that did in the screening that I saw of it. People around me were like, oh man, this is... Oh, this is dark. Oh, th this is scary. No, it's not either of those things. I hate this film. Basically, the premise of this one is that there's a guy who gets a new laptop, and then we see the whole film for about an hour and a half on this laptop screen as he's talking to his friends through Skype on game night and they're trying to uncover a little bit about the weird things that are on this laptop. You know, like 99% of this hard drive's full. What's it full of? Uh, spoiler alert, it's full of an hour and a half of just 
Just painful writing, acting, everything. Fuck this film. And in fairness to the film, the first 20 minutes are not as insufferable as the rest, you know? I'm not going to stand here and say it was good or, or even okay, but the first 20 minutes, I didn't want to end my life. I was like, okay, not sure I'm on board, but you haven't done anything too bad yet. I'm willing to let you go and see if you can suck me into this film. But it's almost as if it just can't wait. It's as if Steven Susco, whose side note is only his previous work on this, is writing for The Grudge and The Grudge 2, and also the Texas Chainsaw 3D film that came out. Immediate red flag should have popped up there for whoever was giving money to this film. But it's almost as if young Steven here was, was like, you know what I can't wait to do? is come up with a vague idea for something which might lead to a vaguely interesting film and then just sh I can't wait to just shit all over it. All over it. Not an inch of it is going to be left clean. And that's what's happening, guys. So I guess arguably he set out to do what he intended. Can't really fault him for that. But you can fault him for a terrible screenplay which doesn't make any sense at the best of times. Awful casting. There's this one dude in this film who's... I believe he's an Australian actor playing a, a British guy. He's the kind of techie guy in a friendship group. My word is he bad, not convincing in the slightest. At one point, he even says a line, now this isn't the exact line, but it's something along the lines of, bloody hell, they just killed Trish. I don't know whether the name was Trish, but a, a British guy saying bloody hell, he sounded like Ron Weasley in Harry Potter. <laughs> bloody hell, Harry. Not one of the cast members did a good job for me in this one. And the, the plot just goes to the strangest places, really. There's a strange dramatic element thrown in there between this lead character and his girlfriend. His girlfriend is deaf, and there is the single funniest attempt at like a dramatic moment where he's trying to kind of confess his love to her and, and talk about the moment he met her, the moment he knew he was in love with her. And he's like, and I shit you not, this is pretty much how the dialogue goes. He's saying to his girlfriend, I, I saw you across the room in a very loud club where there was loads of music going, and I was trying to get your attention, and it was at that moment I realised that you couldn't hear any of the music like everyone else could. You couldn't hear anything, and you haven't been able to for your whole life because you're deaf, and that's when I knew I loved you. Hmm. Somewhere in there, there's something sweet, right? But Steven Sisko didn't find it. But also apparently the film has two endings, neither of which really makes sense with the rest of the film, but the ending that I got makes less sense. I don't know why it exists as an ending. So yeah, before I risk turning this into like just a 20 minute rant about how much I just despised Unfriended the Dark Web, we're gonna cut it off there. This film is terrible. There's almost nothing good about it. The only redeeming feature of this one is that it made me laugh quite a lot. Um, but I did get kind of bored with it. It's not even that funny. If you're a fan of the first one, you'll probably like this one. If you didn't like the first one, do not come anywhere near this I beg you, please. But let's move swiftly on to our final catch-up, which is for A24's First Reformed. You could say after watching this film, I've been... Ah, where the hell did you come from? Ah, that's... Jesus Christ, that's gonna hurt. That's not... That's not cool. Unbelievable. It's really, really fantastic, guys. This is the latest film from Paul Schrader, who it might ring some bells to you in your old noggin if you've ever seen films like Taxi Driver or Raging Bull, because he done writ those. And there are definitely many elements of those films popping up here through the screenplay, but it's, you know, it's not just a new Taxi Driver, but with Ethan Hawke as a priest, which I've heard a couple of people kind of make reference to. It's his own thing, guys, all right? And it's definitely a bit of a return to form for the little Paul Schrader, because I really fucking dug this one. I thought it was a fantastic film. Firstly, Ethan Hawke is just wicked in this role. Arguably one of the best roles we've seen from him for a long time. Plus, you put him aside other great actors like Amanda Seyfried and Cedric the Entertainer is in here. <laughs> what? Didn't expect to see him, but he does a good job in this film, guys. But mainly it's just a really, really engrossing, deeply interesting and puzzling look at the ethics of kind of organised religion and environmentalism and, and the, the clashing of those two things, but also the things that they have in common. It's a really fascinating moral look into these characters, which I just absolutely adored. Despite the fact that it is undeniably a little bit of a slow burn, as you're watching it, I just found myself falling deeper and deeper into its, into its little claws. Until you get to the end, which gets incredibly tense for reasons I'm not going to go into, and just starts to become this very warped, very interesting, often kind of unsettling look at, at what this will do to a person. I loved it. I loved the end of this film. And the very, very end of this film, I think, is undeniably one of those endings which is kind of set out to divide audiences. People are going to be like, huh? 
No. And some people, myself including, would be like, what have I just watched? I loved it. But definitely do check it out. I seriously, seriously recommend it. It's a fantastic film all round. One of those films which you come out of and you just, you just have to sort of talk about with people because I think people are going to have differing opinions on certain elements of the film. And that's great. That's arguably everything you could want from a film like this. So it's absolutely done its job. A24 have nailed it again. God damn it. Could you just stop being so good, but not really, because I want more of your fucking film. But that's it, guys. Thank you so much for coming along this journey of catching up. We've talked about three films there. Let me know what you thought about any of those films in the comments down below. I'd love to know what your opinions are on it, particularly Unfriended Dark Web. I have to know if there are people out there that really enjoyed it and why. As usual, if you like this video and you do want to see me talk about more shit, please do consider clicking subscribe. Firstly, it really helps me out, but secondly, it means that you won't miss any future videos from this whatever I am. And finally, before I disappear, I just want to let you guys know that the 12th episode of the Stu Talks podcast is live now, went out last night. You can get it on iTunes, Spotify, Buzzsprout, you name it. We got you covered. It's in the description below. Click the link on there. It'll take you through. Have a little listen. We've been talking about films such as, but not limited to, Christopher Robin unfriended dark web whoa spoiler alert because i've just done a little talkie about that here as well as a festival and also a little bit of movie news from the week rounded up for you guys there so yeah click the link in the description it'll take you through if you haven't already follow us on twitter at stew talks pod also in the description yeah that's pretty much everything i'm gonna get off my chest for you guys i'll see you guys next time for probably another review but maybe something else who knows i haven't worked it out yet until next time stay beautiful mother truckers <laughs>